Matthew 1, 21. Today we're looking at the fact that Jesus came to save us. Jesus came to save us, the whosoever. That freely given by God, if we by faith believe, we are saved. You get that? That if by our faith we believe and accept Christ, we are saved. You get that? It tells us in our words that if we believe in our hearts and confess with our mouths that we are saved. What more can you want for Christmas than to be delivered from your past and have an opportunity for not only a future that is livable here, right, without giving into the sins of our past, but to spend eternity with He who created us. What greater gift could there be? But what holds us back from that? We're going to look at the difference between light and darkness, you know, the fact that um, maybe we're still kind of in the dark and we can't see. I, I touched on that before that sometimes we're afraid of change, but maybe we just can't even see where God has us going. That if we accept Him and we, we put our trust in Him and He puts us on a path, maybe we can't, you know, fathom, let's say, a better life than we, you know, could imagine ourselves having. Of course, it's a better life than we have today, especially if you're in the Salvation Army program, right? You, you came here because you want a better life. You want changes in your life. Well, there are major changes that need to happen. And we have to have the faith to believe that God sent His Son to save us. Before we go any further, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank You for Your Word. I pray, Father, right now that we put aside everything. Help me, Father, to focus completely on You. Speak to me, Father, the words that I need to hear because I need to hear every day what you would have me to do. And I pray, Lord, for each and every person as you, Father, use me, use me as a vessel. Speak through me the words that each one of us in this room need to hear today. And Father, even though they might sound different to each individual, each individual needs you. And you are calling them each individually into a relationship with you. So I pray, Father, that the words that I speak are from you so that they might hear and respond. Thank you, Lord, for being here with us this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. He will save his people from their sins. Now, if we get into the, the New Testament, okay, if, well, if you look at the Old Testament, right, it's, it's really about the Hebrews, about the, the Jews, about the, the nation of Israel, okay? So these are the people, God's chosen people. Have you ever heard that before? God's chosen people. Well, see, an interesting thing happened when Christ came, because even in the prophecy of the coming Savior, it states that he will be not only for the Jew, but for the Gentile alike. Do we understand who the Gentiles are? <laughs> you point to yourself. Yeah, pretty much. 
non, non-Jew, Gentile. So it's not like we're putting a whole bunch of classes together. This is two different groups of people. But Christ came so that a relationship with God is available for every breathing person. <coughs> that, again, the whosoever will be saved. So Christ came to save us. And all we need to do is accept Him. And accept is a decision. Right? I mean, we, we hear about decisions in the steps, right? What's step one say? Step one? Right? So we recognize that our lives are messed up. Step two says, we recognize that there's a power right. And step three then says what? We made a what? A decision. So decisions have to be made all the time. Every day. The greatest decision you will make is to surrender yourself to God and accept His plan for your salvation through Christ Jesus. That is the greatest decision that man will ever make. We make a decision to turn our will and our lives over, it says, to the care of God, right? But I say this, completely surrender on a daily basis even after we've surrendered ourselves and we've accepted Christ and we've become a a new creation in Christ, it tells us that we still have to every day maintain that relationship. Because God will speak to you and you will hear God speaking to you, but it's up to you then to make the decision whether or not you're going to follow that guidance by God. Different, Different direction there, but again... It's a decision that Christ came to us and we have to decide whether or not we then are going to accept Christ into our hearts. And why? Because of darkness. The first, and I didn't have it in there, but the first sentence in Isaiah 9 said, and I'm paraphrasing, that there was a great darkness in the land. Sound like today? How about your life individually? There's a great darkness in your life. It's not hard 26, 27, almost 27 years later for me to remember wandering the streets in darkness. Each one of you have darkness. We need to come out of that darkness. And we just heard from John chapter 1 about how Christ has always been. But he came to shed light on our darkness individually, each and every one of us. Of course, for the world. But we have to look at it individually. (laughs) This is a close, personal, intimate relationship that God is calling you into between you and He. So Christ came to shed light on that darkness. Um, <clears throat> have you tried to fix things on your own? Has it worked? You know, I, I would say that there was maybe some things that you were able to make changes on if the pain was great enough. Um, but for the most part, we need help. And Isaiah 59, 9 and 10 says, We grope like the blind along a wall, feeling our way like people without eyes. Even the brightest new time, we stumble as though it were dark. Get that? This is us trying to work things out on our own. This is us trying to fix our ourselves on our own strength and wisdom. It doesn't work. We are in darkness. Something has to come. You know what I was saying? Like a light turns on, right? 
You ever see that with a bulb on top of the head? A light needs to turn on. We need to be able to see through the darkness so that we can see that which God would have us to do. And on our own, we can't see that. It's just impossible. We can't get it right. No matter how much we try, we're still in darkness. And that's why Christ came. Because we need light in our darkness. Isaiah 49, 6 says, He says, You will do more than restore the people of Israel to me. You will make a light to the Gentiles. And you will bring salvation to the ends of the earth. Who is this referring to? This is Jesus. This is a, a, a prophecy of the coming Savior. That he will shed light on our darkness. As again in the first chapter of Isaiah. Or the first sentence in Isaiah 9. That they were in a great darkness. Not only did he come to shed light for the Jews. It says you will make a light to the Gentiles. Us. To the whosoever. To all of the world. That if we believe. We receive. It says, you will bring my salvation, says God, to the ends of the earth. So here we read on a little bit more in Isaiah 49, 8 through 10. This is what the Lord says. At just the right time, I will respond to you. On the day of salvation, I will help you. I will protect you and give you the, to the people as a Get to the people as my covenant with them. Through you I will establish the land of Israel and assign it to its own people again. I will say to the prisoners, come out in freedom. And those in darkness come into the light. They will be my sheep grazing in the green pastures and on the hills were previously bare. They will neither hunger nor thirst. The searing sun will not reach them anymore. For the Lord in His mercy will lead them. He will lead them beside cool waters. <coughs> Come out in freedom. Man, we want to be free of the mess, right? We want to be free from... From the bondage that a lot of us have put on ourselves. You know, I always say one of the things that is that, that hurts my heart the most, okay? It's like I always say, you know, once somebody leaves us, I, I really have little ability to help people that are outside. But while you're here, I want to do everything that God has for me to do for you to help you overcome your own bondage. But what drives me crazy the most is when I see somebody and everything is there, but yet they still refuse to accept. Everything is available. And all we need to do is accept. What holds us back? Again, the darkness, if, if we're still in it. And why do we purposely stay in darkness? Well, maybe we don't want others to see. Maybe we still have things that we know are wrong but like to do. One of my things when I used to, when I was in and out of the program, right? When I, when I got to the point where I talked myself into leaving, I'd sneak out because I didn't want anybody to stop me. <laughs> I'd sneak out. I'd leave all my stuff behind. I didn't care. <laughs> I was in bondage. And I refused the help of people that God put in my life to save me from my own bondage. It's craziness. Or as my wife would say, it's a crazy mess. <laughs> All right, so here is 
in the New Testament. So we might understand why Christ came. In the beginning, and who Christ is. In the beginning, the Word already existed, right? We're talking about Jesus here. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through Him, and nothing was created except through Him. The Word gave life to everything that was created, and His life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. God sent a man, John the Baptist, to tell about the light so that everyone might believe because of his testimony. John himself was not the light. He was simply a witness to tell about the light. The one who is the true light, who gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. You say it lets them like turn the switch, right? We flip the switch off. Darkness itself, once we've come into a relationship with God, cannot take God away from us. Darkness itself, okay, so let's let's talk about what this means, right? So the enemy, Satan, the devil, uh, Lucifer, whatever title you want to put on this darkness, once we've accepted Christ, can't take that away from us. Now we might, we might choose to dim that light. You ever dim the light? You might even do it unconsciously by maybe not spending the time that you should in God's Word or in prayer. But it can't be taken away. <coughs> we need light, again, to escape the darkness. The sad truth is people deny Him. So here's what I was just referring to in John chapter 1, 10 through 14. He came into the very world He created, but the world didn't recognize Him. He came to His own people, and even they rejected Him. But to all, listen, to all who believed Him and accepted Him, He gave the right to become children of God. They are reborn, not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. So the Word became human, and He made His home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness, and we seen, we have seen His glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. Okay, so the Word became human and made His home among us. Listen, He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness. Anyway, you you got to spend time in this, right? If we look, right? If, if we're if we're seeking if we're seeking guidance, if we're seeking direction, and, and for the most of us, right, we want a model to follow. We can read, but we're looking for a model to follow. There's Christ, full of unfailing love and faithfulness. So we can read about his life. We can see how he acted and interacted, right? How he treated people. How he dealt with temptation when he was in the desert, right? Through looking to God's word. We see someone who, no matter what, even though he knew the pain that he was going to have to endure. You know, of course, say, Lord, please, I'd rather not, wouldn't you? Right? But if it's your will, Lord, I'm ready to do whatever it takes. So we have a model to follow in his life. But for the most, the most important part of all this is that we are accepting, right, that which was given by God, Christ Jesus, into our hearts. You know... Uh, Thank God He gives us a choice. 
it says choose, but he gives us a choice. You know, sometimes we say, Lord, well, why don't you just why don't you just do this for me? We have to make a decision. In Matthew 10, 32 and 33. Everyone who acknowledges me, right? So believe in your heart, confess with your mouth, confess. Who acknowledges me publicly here on earth, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But sadly, right, it says, but anyone who denies me here on earth, I will also deny them before my Father in heaven. It's up to us to make a decision. I try, when I, when I talk about step 11, I always say, you know, I, <clears throat> I have a constant, constant conscious contact with God. In all that I do, I acknowledge God's presence. I seek from Him, and it's not, you know, sometimes I, I you know, I, I say something or make a decision and have to go back and say, look, Hold on, we've got to rethink this. Because I haven't actually... And there's... <clears throat> for me, I'm, gonna, I'm going to explain this, hopefully. Okay, so there's prayer. You know, I get up in the morning, and I, I before I get out of bed, I talk to God about help me out with the day kind of thing, you know. And at night, I, you know, I, I thank Him for getting me through the day, and, and I apologize for the things I did wrong and I thank them for helping me get things right but throughout my day right that constant conscious contact acknowledging God in all that I do is the only reason why I make it through the day it's the only reason why I make it through the day but in this scripture again confess with your mouth is I also make sure that I let people know that's why I'm able to do what I do. That it's not on my own. I acknowledge God. I, I make sure I, I share as much as I can that God is helping me with this. There's no way that I'd be, and, and I, I confess right now, that there is no way that I'd be able to stand up here and even speak to you like this if it wasn't for Him. Because this isn't me. This isn't who I am. Normally, who I used to be 27 years ago, that's not who I was. I was the guy hiding in the woods by himself, didn't want to share with anybody, especially at the end of my addiction. <clears throat> so we have to acknowledge God in all that we do. And 1 Peter 2, 9 and 10 says, But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of Him who called you out of darkness into His wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you have not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. And this is not, record, this is not <coughs> written to the people of Israel. Okay, remember God's chosen people through the, in the Old Testament? This is to all people who have accept, accepted, right, by God's grace, Christ into their hearts as their personal Savior. It tells us that we are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God. And then it tells us that we should declare the praises of Him who called us out of darkness and into His wonderful light. We should acknowledge God and what He's doing in our life. It's a life or death decision. It's a light or darkness decision. Deuteronomy. <clears throat> and this is where, again, we're reminded that we need to make a choice. 30, 19 through 20. Today I have given you the choice between life and death between blessings and curses. Now I call on heaven and earth to witness the choice you make. 
Oh, that you would choose life so that you and your descendants might live. You can make this choice by loving the Lord your God, obeying Him, and committing yourself firmly to Him. This is the key to your life. And if you love and obey the Lord, you will live long in the land the Lord swore to give your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Today, God has given you a choice. And even though, I'm not saying there might be someone here that, was, that came from a Jewish family, even though we are not, right, as the Old Testament states, God's chosen people, we are now God's chosen people through Christ Jesus. Do you hear me? That by accepting Christ, right, which Christ came not to, not to do away with God's commandments, but to fulfill them. That by accepting Christ as, as prophesied through Isaiah, <clears throat> because we are the Gentiles, right? By accepting that which God has given, we too then are His children. Right? So, you know, and, and, and the first thing, as I said, that popped in my head is the happiness, let's say, of a child receiving a gift on Christmas morning. We get to not only know that happiness, by accepting Christ this Christmas, but we get to know the joy of God. The joy of God. Merry Christmas. Wednesday we're going to have a, another service in here. And I pray that over the next couple of days, if you have not yet, um, listen to God's leading. He's calling you. He's calling each and every one of you into a relationship with Him through Christ. As I mentioned last week, you know, it's, it's in the program always that the closing prayer is a call to commitment. It's a time to personally commit your life to God through Christ Jesus. By recognizing that Christ is the way to God's plan for your life and realizing your separation from God's plan because of sin, you accept Christ as your personal Savior to deliver you from your sin, to shed light on that darkness. No more do you need to grope along the wall like a blind man. That even in the noonday sun, you're still really in darkness once you've accepted Christ into your life. So we're going to pray. <clears throat> and I pray that you make a decision whatever God is calling you to decide on, and if that decision is to accept Christ, I pray that you do so this morning. Humble yourself before God. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank You so much for everything, Lord, that You do. I thank You, Father, for Your Son, Christ Jesus, that came to us as a child in human form who lived here with us. And we get to read about His life in Your Word. But it's so much more. I thank You, Father, for the sacrifice that He made. The pain that He had to deal with for us so that we might be forgiven. And I pray, Lord, this morning for those that are still here that have yet to accept this as truth, Lord. I pray that as you speak to our hearts, as our hearts are bowed, as our heads are bowed, as we humble ourselves before you. Father, it's, it's up to us, each person individually, to come to you, to to acknowledge that they are sinners and to ask for your forgiveness. We believe that you died for our sins and rose from the dead. Help us, Lord, to accept this and turn from our sins and invite your Son, Christ Jesus, into our hearts as our personal Savior. Thank you, Lord. And I pray, Father, for those that have accepted you, 
If this is a brand newness, Lord, I pray that they open their mouths and they share that with others. And not only have they accepted You into their hearts, Father, but they want others to know about it. There's something special about us confessing with our mouths. You tell us that is how we are saved. <clears throat> so keep us strong, Lord. Give us the courage that it takes to stand out in the crowd, to know what we stand for, and to share you with others. There's still great darkness in this world, Lord. Help us, help us, Father, to illuminate you to a dark world. Again, Father, we thank you. And as we look to Wednesday where we celebrate the birth of Jesus, I pray, Father, that we keep our minds focused on you and our hearts open to your leading in all that we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.